Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another face painting tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use some brush techniques for face painting some beautiful flowers. So I'm going to pick up this split cake called Dublin by Tag with my short angled flat half inch brush from the face painting shop. I'm going to dip that brush into the water, get rid of any excess by swiping it along the edges of the cup and then I want the white of this petal to be in the inner so I'm going to aim to get that onto the heel of the brush and I want the tip of the brush to pick up the pink or magenta that we have here. So swiping your brush from left to right, trying to keep it at a straight angle, a straight line as you're doing this. Don't be afraid to really press down onto the split cake to pick up as much cake as you want. It's very important to swipe off any excess water or dip it into a rag just to get rid of any excess water to prevent your split cakes from getting all flooded and muddy. So I'm going to make a reference, reference point here which is going to be a starfish. And I'm going to bring my brush flat up, curving with the tip of the brush leaving the heel stationary before lifting off and curving back into that center point. Then again for this arm, I'm going to do the curve around that arm. So I'm going to bring the brush flat, bringing it up, around flat before lifting it back up into the center. On this side, bringing your brush up flat to make a curve and making sure you're leading with the tip of that brush again and around and stopping off right there before finishing off right at this last foot bringing the pedal up stroke flat stroke before lifting the brush up as we head to the middle of this flower and just with the heel of the brush now that's got that pale pink loaded i'm just going to fill in those areas in the middle because I've just used that brush on this flower, I'm going to reload my brush by dipping it into the water slightly and then tapping it onto a cotton towel. And then I'm going to proceed in picking up some more paint from that split cake, pressing right down. I'm going to start off here and I'm going to bring my brush up leading with that tip, pressing down to curve and back down. On the other side, bringing the brush flat and curvy and then meeting it right in the middle. Again, up, flat and curve. We've got two more to go. Always aim for five petals when doing these ones. Flat, curve, before leading it in with the tip inward and then again curve and then tip inward filling in that area now for this flower we're going to do a wiggly effect on the petals so again i'm going to dip just the tip of that dab it onto a towel any excess water and i'm going to pick up some of that pink to go on the tip of the brush and the lighter color on the heel. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to bring the brush up leading with the tip, wiggle the tip as the heel of the brush is in center and down to the middle, bringing the brush up, really curving the tip of the brush while the heel is almost stationary then bringing it back to that center. Again on this side, bringing the brush up, really, really curving the tip and then bringing it back to the center. Again, bringing it up, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle the tip, 
bringing it in. And then the last stroke, again, bringing it up, wiggle the tip, and then bringing it right in. Filling in the inner of that flower with that light rose color that we have on this split cake. Now you can achieve this um, single round petal look flower by using this large petal brush from the face painting shop. And what we're gonna do is, this is called double dipping technique. So I'm gonna spray. I've just sprayed this split cake with some water, which is gonna make, activate the paint and get it wet and runny for me, which is what I want. And I'm gonna dip my large petal brush into water. I do like the large ones when I'm painting a lot of flowers because they seem to hold a lot more paint in them. Whereas the smaller ones, which you can get them in all sorts of sizes. You've got smaller ones, they don't retain as much paint as these ones, but they're still very effective in making smaller, beautiful petal flowers. So dipping it in your water, and now I'm just loading up some white. I'm using a tag white for this. I wanna make sure that this brush is nicely loaded right up to the ferrule. And now that it's nicely loaded, I'm gonna grab a, um, a little sponge or a little cloth or towel, and I'm just going to get rid of any excess by doing a circular motion on the spot like this. And that's gonna get rid of any excess paint right at the tip. I also like to pinch it a little just to get rid of any of that excess paint. And that will this will be the inner of the flower. Now I'm just gonna dip it into my sprayed other color, whatever color you want the inner of the flower to be. Just gently picking up that color. Now before I do any petal flowers using these brushes, I always like to do a tester on my arm. That looks okay. Sometimes it's a bit blobby, so it's good to test on your hand. So with the tip, putting the tip of the brush on the skin, I like to move it out a little, just a fraction, and then pressing down so that paint transfers onto the skin bringing it out just a little bit and notice my brush is on a little a bit of an angle so if you have a look from another angle here I've got the tip of the brush right here and I'm going to bring it down on an angle again from the middle so always going back to the middle as an access. If you're new to this, it's good to do a dot in the middle and just keep going to that dot and then press down. And there you have the same petal as that, um, but you've had to double dip it. You with these, you can also make smaller flowers by pressing not so hard. So by not pressing that hard, we're not getting that much of a round petal. We can then drag the tip of the brush to get that lime color on and then lay the, the brush downward just to get that effect. Again, tip, drag, and then push down. Drag the tip, push down. Drag it and push it down and you can change the direction in which it goes. So another round petal flower down and the more you use it obviously the, the less paint you'll have on the brush. So as you keep painting on flowers on a face you'll notice that you'll start to run out and you have to reload. Now I'm going to show you that same effect using the green as the outer of the petal. Try to go for a creamy consistency when loading up paint, so you don't want them to be too watery. So again, grabbing that cloth, it's always handy to have a cloth or a rag or a towel at your face painting kit. Just getting rid of any excess paint. I'm gonna pinch some of that off. And now where I've been making a bit of a well in the paint, I'm gonna dip some of that 
white into that uh, that brush into that white now before using this you want to test it on our hand if the more we use it the more paint that's if we've got excess paint it'll transfer it onto the skin so if i now do some petals so pressing down slightly out pressing down slightly out pressing down now because there's thinner petals i can make them i can make more petals along this one so i normally do three on one side and three on the other side you can do more it's all up to you you can drag and drop drag again and drop so remembering when you're pressing down you're pressing your brush down on an angle. You can load up any colors with these flower brushes and petal brushes. They're very effective. So I've just loaded up a number three Lowell Cornell round brush. I'm just going to, with it generously loaded, just put a little dot in the middle. If your brush is nicely loaded with a lot of paint that's almost watery, you'll be able to achieve that perfect dot as it will form a little bit of a puddle. Now we're going to paint on a tipped petal with the tip on the end. So using that half inch short angled flat brush again, dipping it into the water, getting rid of any excess water by swiping it along the sides. And I'm gonna pick up some of that blue right on the tip. And I want the heel to pick up some of that lime and some of that aqua. To make a, a, a tipped petal, I'm going to draw a V just by pressing a V down, making it a little thin or thick or whatever size you want, bringing the brush up, dragging it up, curving it, and then bringing it up. So again, bringing it down flat before swooping the tip up to meet that other tip. Again, another V bringing that flat and curved and then bringing the tip of the brush point it right up to the top of the tip so curving it out and then tipping it right to the tip as you're lifting your brush up again flat curve and tip and again flat curve and tip Make another V here, flat curve and tip, flat curve and tip. And to finish off, flat curve it and bring it up to a tip. You can make the tip point the tips pointy or you can make them not so pointy. So I'll give you an example. We're, lead, we're reloading the brush. It's important to just tip the brush into the water slightly and then get rid of any excess onto a towel or a rag by dabbing it on. Picking up some more paint. Let's try that again. So a V. I'm going to give it a curve and up, a curve and up. It's not so pointy than that one, so we're not dragging it up when we're pointing it so much. So another V, bringing the brush flat and curved and up. Another one here, bringing it around, curving it and up. Again, flat, curve, leading with that tip and up flat curve and leading with that tip to meet at that area a 
again, bringing the brush out, curving it, making it flat and tipping it. And again, so I'm going to start on that V reference point around curving it and then meeting at the tip and one more time just to complete it all bringing it around curving and bringing it up into a tip at a V curving and twisting to the tip just picking some of that blue up and I'm going to make a middle dot right in the middle of that flower. Okay, so just with any number four round brush, we can also achieve thinner petals. So if I do a dot right here, bring it up, laying it flat. Again, from that point, bring it up and flat. And again, up and flat, up, flat tip of the brush and then flat tip of the brush angle the brush down and flat and then flat and then the last petal right there we can always bring a lovely little yellow dot in the middle for roses we can also use our half angled brush so I'm going to dip my half angled brush into the water, get rid of any excess by swiping the sides. Now I want the lighter pink to be right at the tip of my brush. So I'm going to just swipe it from left to right, trying to maintain a straight line as I'm doing this so I don't bleed any colors, any of the pink into the lighter. So I want the darker pink on the heel of the brush and the lighter pink at the top. Bring the brush onto an angle and then bring the brush up, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle a few times and then before bringing it right down. Bring it up again, wiggle, wiggle, make the waves a little bit thicker again. On the other side, up, wiggle, 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 wiggle your brush. Going into the center, again, bring it out, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your brush. And then going through to the center. And lastly, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your brush and bringing it to the center. Okay, usually when I'm doing this type of rose, I like to let it dry before I do the inner areas. So we'll just go on to doing little rosebuds. So I'm going to dip just the tip of the brush into the water and dab it onto my cloth. And then I'm going to load some more of that paint on. The lighter pink up the top and the pink down the bottom, the darker pink down the bottom. So now I'm just going to do that, do a little petal, just a single petal like that. And then from there on, I'm going to do a, almost like a Nike swoop, the beginning of that Nike swoop. So on an angle, bringing it up and around, bring it up and in and then up and in that's a very basic rose petal and if I dip my other half angled brush into the water and get rid of any excess I'm going to load up some of this green split cake just pick up some of that green And then I'm just going to give it a bit of a bud. Or if you do the same, you can do the bud like a V and a curving round and then bringing it up.
the longer you use the loaded up um, colors the more they sort of blend in into each other as where as the light of the pink is always crossing the, the darker pink and it drags it through so I've just reloaded again to go over this so I've reloaded my brush I'm going to swipe it get it wet swipe it on both sides and then pick up that same color again with the light up the top and I'm going to do the exactly what we've done for the rosebud but we're going to do it on the middle part here I'm going to start right up the top here between these two petals and I'm going to start by doing the single round petal upward and then bringing that Nike swoosh almost like down through to the other side and then from here on I'm going to go ahead and bring some strokes out and in brush flat bringing it up out and in around and in and again around and in around and in now just going over it I like to load up a liner brush which is a long thin brush which is great for outlining or doing starbursts etc so on the watery sign at the well of that color cake I'm just going to load up the brush and where the edges are I'm just going to out I'm just going to test it on my hand to see that I've don't have too much loaded on and I'm just going to go ahead and go through all the lighter bits and I'm just going to stroke them so around and where it's meant to be light I'm just going to wiggle 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 and wiggle 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 them across wiggles wiggles and then of course the outline of the actual rows just detailing the rest of that white I'm just going to add a leaf to this rose bring the curve up bringing my my brush flat wiggling 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 all the way to the tip and then drag your brush leading with the darker side and for the other side I'm going to do the same I'm going to bring my brush flat wiggle it wiggle it wiggle it on an angle and then twist it flat and drag it through bring it up wiggle 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 up to a pyramid point twisting your brush as we're curving twisting it dragging it again wiggle wiggle curving it curving it inward and outward bringing it flat to meet with that tip I like to make a little line with the darker of that green right through the middle just to give it some depth and there you have some simple roses to practice. We can also make some carnation type flowers that have really small petals. So if we just make some teardrops all coming inward. So some long ones, some short ones. all coming inward then with a number two round number three round brush that was number four this is number three and now if I go over that with some white just drag some of that purple through it gives it some depth just 
just randomly doing some petals that always there's no order in this it's basically all the petals you want them to meet to finish off right in the middle and if we do some more white ones just coming over to the middle and downward reloading my green I'm just going to do a V with the darker side upward. So in an angle, pressing right down, curving down the bottom, bringing it up to the top of that other side of the V where the angle is and bringing it up. And then from there on, we can just put a little stem on that one. I'm just going to paint a frangipani. I'm using a number six flora brush. Uh, these are fantastic, I think, because they they come from thick and they shape right up to a tip right at the end. So um, you basically just bring it down and it gives you a perfect petal. So I'll just show you on my arm. Now I'm just loading this up with some white and I'm going to do exactly the same as what I've done when I've double dipped. So I want to pick up as much white paint as possible. Now I've just sprayed this twice, bang bang. And these flora brushes are the bomb for frangipanis in my opinion. Just with a hand towel or your cloth, I'm going to get rid of any excess of the brush or you can also pinch it. And then what we do is just dip the tip of that into the yellow. I just do a test on my hand, make sure I haven't overloaded that. And so for the frangipani, we we'll basically just do exactly the same with the starfish type. There's the head of the starfish. Here are the arms. Just pressing down is the other arm. Sorry, that's the leg. And then bringing it down. So I'm just tipping the brush right in the middle and then making it flat right to the ferrule of the brush. With this white, I just want to bring some of that white through to the middle. The second petal. Bringing that white into the middle and again and again bring that white right into the middle curving it to the middle and that last petal bringing it in and going over that White going over colour sometimes can be a challenge. So sometimes you need to go through, go over things a couple of times. Wait for it to dry and then just go over it again. And a frangipani leaf is basically very, very basic. It's just round and then stops right there. So again, around and it stops right there. So your brush is flat like this on an angle, bringing it flat halfway, curving up and stopping. Bringing your brush up and around, bringing it flat a little to get rid of some of that paint and then flat. And then with your, with the dark side facing inward, I'm just going to stroke it. And there you have a pretty frangipani. Now, if we wanted to draw some tulips, which are, in my opinion, really pretty flowers, I'm going to use a short angled three quarter inch brush. I'm going to dip it into my water. Get rid of any excess like this. And now I want the tip of the brush to cover white and the rest to cover the lighter pink and then the darker pink. 
try to get a good generous amount onto your brush. This is um, from a Global Colors palette that I got quite a while ago. Now with that loaded again, I'm going to make a V so I know where to start. I'm going to come right out and bring it into a tip. Now I want the other tip to come, but I want a bit of a, a space between them. So I'm going to, on an angle, bring my brush flat while I'm curving it around and then bringing it into a tip. I'll just start right inward from where the outer is and I'm going to place, place my brush right there, bring it into a curve almost flat and make it a smaller curve in and a smaller tip. Now with that half inch flat brush with the white with the lighter green pointing upward I just want to bring a leaf up and downward and with the tip of where that darker green is I'm going to make a V and that will be your tulip. It's quite pretty the way it is but if you want to outline it I've got a number three Law Cornell round brush and with the tip of my brush I'm just going to outline. And there's a little tulip flower for you to practice. Thanks for watching. If you got something out of this, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any face painting related questions or you need something that you need clarified, make sure you comment down below and I'll do my absolute best to share my knowledge with you in the next video. I'm on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to follow me so we don't miss each other for the next one. Until next time, happy painting.